and what he is doing, and uh, it's just good. Amen? It's very good to, to be here this morning. I'm excited about what Jesus wants to do in our lives collectively and uh, individually. I will say to you, okay, uh, there has been, and there is ongoing, and it's not just in this church, but it's in several churches, a situation of attack against the believers. Uh, sickness, whatever, uh, trial, trouble, whatever it might be. Wherever the devil can stir up trouble, he's stirring up trouble. Yep. Wherever the devil can stir up trouble, he's stirring up trouble. I believe that we have a faithful God. I also believe that not only do we have a faithful God, but we have a God who ministers righteousness to each and every one of us. Amen? So as we open in prayer this morning, as we ask God to come into this place this morning, as we ask that the presence of God would be upon this place, I am going to ask God to move in victory. Amen? We need to take back the ground that the devil has stolen away. And the only way we can do it is to begin to proclaim the promises of God and the presence of God, not only within our life, but within the entire sphere of the believers on earth. You know, I heard this week, and, and I don't know if you've known, there are reports of massive revivals breaking out in Wyoming. Massive revivals breaking out in Texas. The Spirit of God is on its way. I pray that the next massive revival would break out right here in Iowa, and we would be part of it. Amen? Amen. Let's open a word of prayer this morning. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as we become, Lord, into your presence. And Lord, as we move, Lord, into this time, we bind the influence of the enemy and we loose the Holy Spirit. And we say, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, devil, take your hands off of the church of God. You are defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray, Lord, that the massive power of the Holy Spirit would flow upon not only our country, but upon the state and upon the city of Iowa City this morning. That every believer would feel the touch of the Holy Spirit in some way this morning. Walk with us, move with us, talk with us. Let us know, Lord, that your presence is abounding in us. And that we have hope this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen? Hallelujah. The word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's begin to seek first the kingdom of God in song. We're getting there. There we go. Seek ye first. Make this a prayer as we sing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom 
kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Father, we seek first your name. Lord, we come as in Matthew chapter 7, asking, seeking, and receiving, Lord, this morning. Let it be added unto us as we seek your righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have problems, God always makes a way. The word says he makes a way of escape. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. God will make a way to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way. Oh, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. Love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, he'll lead me. And Something new today. Worship Him this morning. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He 
works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. Lord, and rivers in the desert will I see, heaven and earth will fade, but his word will still remain, he will do something new today. You know the reason why Jesus makes a way for us? It's because he loves us. Hallelujah. Somebody here this morning, your favorite song we're going to sing next. Jesus, lover of my soul. Amen. He loves us and he cares. I will never let you go. Hallelujah. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, sent my feet upon the rock, now I know I love you. I need you, though my world may fall, I'll never let you go, my Savior, my dearest friend, I will worship you until the very end, Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I will never let you go. And you've taken me. You've taken me from the miry clay. Set my feet upon the rock. Now I know. I love you. Tell them this morning. I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you My closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. Feet upon the rock, now I know who I love you. I need you. My world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very. 
my closest friend I will worship you until the very end Hallelujah 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 Lord we worship you Hallelujah 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 The air we breathe is from Jesus presence of God that we walk in is from the Lord. Amen. This is the air I breathe. Bless your holy name. Worship Him as we sing these next two songs. Let Him know that your desire for Jesus to breathe in you and through you this morning. Scripture. That's all right. Go ahead. You you missed. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I stand in awe of you. This is the air I breathe. Yes. This, this is, is the air I breathe. Your, Your holy presence living in me. This, this is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your, Your very word spoken to me. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. Hallelujah. And I, I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. Lord, I'm desperate for you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Holy presence. I'm lost. 
us without you. Yes, Lord. We're lost without you. Where could I go? Hallelujah. Lord, make us desperate for your presence. Make us desperate for you this morning. This is the air I breathe. Lord, let the air that we breathe be desperate for your presence. Be desperate for you. And Lord, as we do that, we stand in awe of you. I invite everybody just to stand and make this a worship song. I stand, I stand in awe of you and worship him. Lift your hands, give him praise this morning, for he is God. Hallelujah. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful. Like nothing ever seen or heard Who can rest your infinite wisdom Yes, Lord Who can fathom the depths of your love You are beautiful beyond description Majesty Beautiful, Lord. Too marvelous for any of my words. Oh, hallelujah. Wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? The depth of your love My worthy fall beyond description Majesty and throne above Tell him like you mean it Send I stand in of you I stand I stand, I stand. 
seated if you'd like. If you want to stand, that's fine too. Amen. Mary, would you come? This is Psalm 56 verse 11. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? In the one true God I rely. I will not be terrified. What can people do to me? Amen. 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 I mean, you know, we serve a good God, a wonderful God, a powerful God, a God that creates something out of nothing. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. I made an offer. Wednesday night, nobody got it, so I get to keep, keep my, my offer, my prize. I said I was going to speak Wednesday night this morning, and somebody could tell me, I was going to speak on a little dab will do you. A little dab will do you. But it has to be the right dab. You hear what I'm saying? Your little devil relationship, that's not what I'm talking about. Your little bit of giving it to God, ooh, that's enough, Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. A lot of times we'll only go so far with God until we get desperate for Him. And then as we get desperate for Him and we cry out to Him, God begins to move in our situation and we can say, I stand in awe of you this morning. I believe who you are. And as I began to read this, and the, I, I heard this scripture spoke on as I was listening to different people this week. And the Lord said, that's your scripture. And I said, well, that's good. What do you want to talk to, to us about? What do you want to talk to your church about? You know, sometimes the Lord just gives you something and he doesn't tell you what he wants, the specific of what he wants, until it's time. So I kept reading this and I kept reading this. I said, well, that's a nice little story, but what does it have to do with me? Anybody ever read, done that? What does that have to do with me? It has everything to do with you and I. Let's open a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Release your word, Lord, this morning. Release your spirit this morning in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. Release, Father, your presence unto us that we might receive the benefit and the power of who you are. Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 2 Kings chapter 4 is a little story. At first I thought it was disconnected, and then the Lord, by experience this week, showed me that it's not disconnection, it's reality. 2 Timothy chapter 4 is a story, and some of you know it, some of you 
have probably read it several times. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know this, your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil, a little dab of oil. Now listen. Then Elisha said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all <clears throat> your neighbors' empty vessels. Don't get them already full. Get them empty. Do not gather just a few. Get everything you can. And when you have come in, you shut, shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour, into, <clears throat> pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured that little bit of oil out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons shall live on the rest. Beautiful story of the presence of God, isn't it? And the marvelous protection and provision of the Lord. But there's more to it than just that. And as I began to look at this thing, I see it was a certain woman, an ordinary woman, an ordinary woman. Nothing special, except she was the wife of the prophet of God. She was also the subject of accumulated sorrow. She hurt. She was a woman of hurt. She'd gone through a lot. How many of you have been through a lot in the last year or two or three, whatever? And 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 I mean you just feel like you were at the crux of everything just breaking. And I, I looked at that and I said, Lord what are you saying? See, this widow, like you and I, she was just going through life. She was a widow. She had lost her husband. You know, there's few, if any, of the trying conditions of life more than extreme than be a widow or a widower to lose your mate. Her condition was oppressed. And the reason why I put this in here, first her condition was desolate, and second her condition was oppressed, is very important. Because many of us this morning are experiencing an oppression from the enemy that we can't seem to break. And God's saying, I am loosening by my spirit, a breaking of every chain of bonding. And I am loosening by my spirit a new walk and a walk that you will see the marvelous power of my spirit displayed through your arm and through your hand. We said that, and he said, say that to the church. What are you talking about? Will I'm saying, say that to the church. The Lord says, say that to the church. I want to let my people know that I'm about ready to use them in ways that they never thought they could be used. I'm about ready to turn their world upside down. Or as the world says today, I'm about ready to rock your world in the spirit. And I began to look at that and I said, ooh, Lord, what are you saying? 
She was oppressed. She didn't have any hope for the Spirit to move. Some of you feel like you don't have any hope or you're losing all hope and you're losing what God wants to do in your life. Her husband had died penniless. Given all to the ministry. How many of you know what what it's like Give it all to something. And he died penitently. You know, I, I want to say something to you that's very, very important here. And I've said it to the church council many times, and I, I will say it to the whole church. My only prayer, my only ask of, of this church is that if anything happens to me, that my wife would be taken care of. And I looked at that and I said, whoa. See, I'm sure that husband had talked to Elisha. Say, if anything happens to me, make sure my wife's taken care of. Penniless. She was in debt. Creditors bouncing in. Everything, all the bills were coming in. And she could not pay them. She could not. And she was coming to a point where she didn't understand what was going on. And she had received notice that the creditors were going to come. And because she could not pay her bills, that they were going to come and take her two sons and put them into slavery. To pay off the debt that she owed. How many know she's desperate? How many can see the the desperate situation? But how many of you have had situations in your life recently that you've been desperate? Listen. Her troubles seem to multiply around every quarter. But she was a woman of devout spirit. She was a faithful woman. And over the course of her life, she had faithfully served the Lord and the prophet. See, it's difficult to overestimate the value of having three things in your life. Number one, a pious or faithful partner. Somebody who loves the Lord. Number two, a godly child. Godly child is absolutely a joy to their parents. Or a faithful companion. Someone who is faithful. But there's something more important. And that more important is that we we ourselves are holy, that we live holy before the Lord, that we come before him in righteousness and sincerity. See, we may gather from this entrance the following thoughts concerning the woman. She was devout in the manner of her address when she spoke and cried out to Elisha. In her fear, she says, I don't know what to do. How many of you recently have cried out to God and said, I don't know what to do? Let me give you God's response to you before anything else. You ready? What may I do for you, my child? Elisha looked at her, and he didn't say it angrily. He said it, listen, what do you need? Let's get this thing taken care of. Let's do this. And the Holy Spirit this morning is saying in your and I life, whatever you need, I'm here. I'll take care of it. I want to do something marvelous and rich and wonderful for you. She spoke to Elisha and said, I need this. And then she spoke kindly about her deceased husband. 
Thy servant, my husband, is dead. She didn't whine about it. She didn't complain. How many of you, when things don't go your way, whine? Come on now. There's more than just one here. You know, I'm my hands up with it too. But she was also anxious for her two living son. Because she knew the progress or the progression of the world was that the creditors would come, take her sons bound in chains, and throw them in a life of slavery. Let me tell you something. The devil will tell you that I am going to take you and put you in bondage the rest of your life. But I thank God that we have a God and we have a loving God that says, I'm going to break every chain. I'm going to come and break everything away. See, her true reverence shows the depth of her commitment. Satan will cause you to worry about everything. How many of you know what I'm saying? I worry, I worry, I worry, I worry, I worry. God will say, I'll give you peace. I'll give you peace. What do you got in your house? A little bit of oil. That's all I got. A jar of oil. That's all I got. A jar of oil. I only got something very simple. Something very little. Go gather every empty vessel you can find. I want you to look in your life and find the places that are empty this morning. Are you ready? And I say to you by the Spirit, God is going to fill every empty vessel in your life with His oil, His Holy Spirit. And look out when that happens. Because the blessing is about to take place. Your borders are about to be expanded. Your testimony is about to be increased. Not because of who you are. Not because of what you've done. But because of who Jesus is in you. See, that mother never lost her salvation. She just believed God. And she went to the place where she... She knew she could get some help. The prophet. Now we don't go to the prophets. Who do we go to? Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. The brief description of this woman's sorrow and character is the same description of some of us in our spiritual condition today. But let me tell you, Elisha plays an important role in this lady's life, as does God play an important role in our lives this morning. You ready? Look at the manner in which this woman or this miracle was performed for this woman. God was going to be the widow's helper. God is our helper. As I stand and I begin to look at this, I sense the Holy Spirit saying, I want to be your helper. I want to be your miracle. I want to be your chain breaker this morning. And God is saying that I am here for you in f five different ways. The first thing is, God would say to you, I love you. I love you. Holy Spirit loves us so much. 
He cares so much. And He's tender. It means He understands. No one understands like Jesus. Is a hymn. As a matter of fact, it's Becky's favorite hymn. No one understands. No one understands. Not even our mate. I don't even understand what Becky's need is as much as God understands. God understands our need and He's tender. And thirdly, God is faithful. He's faithful. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor His people baking bread. Hmm. And the fourth thing, you ready? He is full of compassion. When Elisha seen that widow his heart, if you would read the, the reference to this story, his heart went out to that woman. God, something's got to be done. Lord, what can I do for her? And then Elisha gets the word from the Lord saying, do this. But there was one caveat to it. What's the caveat? that the woman followed through with what she was supposed to do. Go tell your sons to gather some things. Find every pot you can from every friend you can and bring it in. And the fifth thing is he is our defender. He is our defender. He is our sword and our shield. Psalm 68, 5 and 6 says this, A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Are you ready for this? He sets the solitary in family, but the second half of this verse, or, he brings out those who are bound into prosperity. How many of you want to prosper this morning? How many of you want God to move upon your life this morning? Let him bring you out. He brought me out of the miry clay. He fits at my feet on a rock to stay. You believe that? He wants to break every chain in your life. See, I believe that in this story, God takes advantage of this woman's adversity. You know why? Because he was giving us an illustration of what we experience in our adversity. I mean, you know what I'm saying. We all go through trials. We all go through trouble. We all go through situations. Often, listen to this, man's adversity is God's opportunity. Why? Because sometimes it takes adversity in our life for us to finally get before the throne of God and say, Lord, here I am. Touch me. Move in my life. Cause me to understand, Lord, what I need from you. See, and God interposed just when this woman's sorrow was the heaviest. Let me say this to you. For you microwave Christians, and we have a few. What do I mean by microwave Christians? It's not that you don't believe. It's not that you're not faithful to the Lord. It's not that, but you want it now. And you want God to show you not only how he's going to do it now, but he's going to show you the outline of how he's going to do it before you can say, okay, God, you can do it now. Mm -mm. It's not the way God works. This woman's sorrow was totally heavy. And just the time 
he ne she needed God to move, what happened? God moved. And gave her instructions on what to do. God will perform his miracles for you. Listen to this, because, and it's not in my notes, but if you need to, everybody should write this down. You ready? God will perform his miracles for you. But sometimes he requires you to take a step of obedience first. You know, we, we love we love to quote that scripture. You ready? God will supply all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, isn't that wonderful? You know, if we, we wrote it in our version, God will supply all my needs. And I don't have to do nothing. That's not what God required. He required this widow to what? Be faithful and to understand that he wanted to do something marvelous. And when her outlook was darkest, God began to move. Deals with us that way. Her faith was tested by the means that she employed. Her deliverance was affected by her obedience. The chains that need to be broken in your life are affected by your obedience to the Lord. End of the story. Not to this church, not to me, not to anything else. To the Lord. What is God speaking to your heart? What is God doing in you? What is God asking you to do? And some of you have been stunned. And I, I tell you, the Lord gave me this. And so don't blame me. Talk to him. Okay? Some of you have been stunned in your spiritual growth because you have refused to do what God has asked you to do. And you've done your own thing for too long. Because you're stubborn as a mule. And I said, Lord, do you want me to say that? He said, yes. Deal with it. Shoe fits, wear it. And then I had to ask God, where am I stubborn? And the Lord started showing me, and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. That's for the church, Lord. It's amazing how we get spiritual shovels and shovel everything off on somebody else. How I many you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, if you're shoveling the manure pile and you're picking it up and shoveling it over your shoulder, okay, when you finish shoveling, you'll not only have one manure pile, but you'll have two. The one in front of you and the one be behind you that you shoveled. So every time that you try to push off what God wants to do on somebody else, you're making another manure pile for yourself. Ouch. Huh? But God spoke to my heart. See, the attributes of the divine character which this miracle exhibits is amazing. The divine law of righteousness. See, after what she does, what she's told, she doesn't know what to do. So she goes back to the prophet and said, I did what I'm told. All the vessels are full. I, I, I got no more room in the house. I, every, there's, there's oil all around me and all, the, all, all these vessels are, are here and here and here and here. They're all full. And, and, and Elisha, it's just plain. He just says, go sell the oil and pay your debt. Go sell your oil. Raise your hand. I want you to make this pronunciation. You ready? These are holy hands. They drip with the Holy Spirit. Now I use my hands to spread the Holy Spirit so that I might be free from my debt. The woman took and sold the oil 
and she paid the debt. Her bondage was broken. But there's more to it. How many of you know God doesn't only give us just enough? God is not brokering. A little dabble, do you? When God does something, He does more than enough. Well, I've sold all this oil. Elisha, I've sold all the oil. I sold all the oil. I sold all the oil. And I still got all this oil. What do I do with all this oil? Well, go sell the rest of it and live. What? On the rest of it. You and your sons live on the rest of it. Live on the Holy Spirit flowing through you. Giving away the Holy Spirit. Because the more you give him away, the more he'll come. There are different types of current. Some of you are playing with a AAA battery. Do you know what I'm saying? How many of you have, have done the trick? And I'm not going to do it this morning because it does hurt a little bit. And I do not advise, nor do I want you to do this. Whether you're here in this place or whether you're listening over the internet. But lick your finger. Lick your thumb. Then take that battery and stick it between the two and find out what happens. How many of how many you've done that? How many of you know you get a little whoop? Some of you got a triple A battery, just a little bit. Some of you got a double A battery. Some of you got 110 current. Some of you got 240 current. But let me tell you something. I don't want any of those. I want to be on the main line. I want to be on the main line. What if I get fried? Well, I'll be a happy fried person then. In the presence of God, I'll be on fire for Him. Oh, no man, nothing but love. That's divine law. God is going to cause a breaking free of our relationships and material. I mean, you know, God's got a blessing. He doesn't intend us to do it. Don't try to do it your way. You'll, you'll mess it up. And when you try to do it your way, God can't intervene and do miracles. Social, commercial, whatever it might be. There are rich resources of divine wisdom that God has for you and I. And here they are. The promises which God may, has made concerning del our deliverance as children in seasons of trial are number one abundant. There's a lot of illustrations of God delivering people in the Word. He delivers you and I every day. Catch the second one. They're simple. They're simple. You don't have to complicate God. You know, and it's amazing. The reason why adults don't get prayers answered as quick as kids, you want to know? Because we as adults complicate everything. Children have simple beliefs. I believe you, God. Okay. That's good. It's only when we become adults that we learn how to doubt. But God's promises are simple. And thirdly, they're precious. Promises of God are precious. I want to give you a couple. The first one is call upon me in Psalms fifty fifteen. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Call upon me. I will deliver. And you shall glorify me. Most of us live that scripture partially. I pray that we all get to the point where we live it fully. What do I mean by partially? 
Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. The end. And we forget to glorify him. My prayer is that we learn that when we call upon him and he delivers us to glorify him. Thank him for it. I was talking to people this week and two or three different people I talked to. You need to change your thinking. And I said you need to get it out of the negative and into the positive. And I went so far as to saying your negative thoughts will turn into sin. Why? Because they're things of the past and God is not a negative God. He's a positive one. Even in his judgments, his judgments are truth. And the second one is when thou, when you, when you, when you take a step of faith. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. God says that to his children, on behalf of his children. Look what he did for the widow. He brought oil out of nothing. One little jar of oil. And and it just kept multiplying, kept multiplying, kept multiplying. Brought water from a rock for Moses. He made a path through the sea for the children of Israel. If he can do all that, what can he do for you? The greatness of divine mercy. I want to go back to this story. To the end of it. Now when it came to pass when the vessels were full. Then he said to her son bring me another vessel. And he said to her there's not another vessel so the oil ceased. When you've got enough. God will let you know. Because let me tell you that same jar of oil. If she. She would have needed more, would have poured more if she would have needed it. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debts, and you son of the... the." See, the Holy Spirit comes. And he comes to you and I the same way he came to that woman, and he says, I'm giving you enough to satisfy the creditor. I mean, you know, Jesus gave enough to satisfy the creditor. Jesus on the cross satisfied the creditor, paid for the sin. And then he says, I'm going to give you some to spare. Live thou and thy children on the rest. Jesus is at the end of his earthly ministry and he says to the disciples, I'm going. The disciples said, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that to us. He says, it's needful for that I go. Why? Because if I don't go, I cannot send a comforter. And I'm sending you a comforter in the Holy Spirit to help you, keep you, guide you. Do what you need to have done. How great is God's mercy? It's higher than the heavens. It lets us be faithful. Teaches us submission. Let me add another one. It teaches us to wait. It causes us to be heroic when duty leads us into trial. Let me tell you something. We're getting ready in the church to go into spiritual warfare. You better get ready. God is looking for heroes of faithfulness. I love the statement Charles Spurgeon made. A lot of cloudy mornings have turned into a beautiful day. A lot of cloudy mornings have turned into a beautiful day. 
It's true. I don't care where your cloud is. Sunshine's coming. The presence of God is coming. We all have trials. But what are our heaviest trials compared to the what those that that woman endured? Let me even go further. What are our heaviest trials compared to what Jesus endured for you and I? You know, it wasn't a pretty event. And we have a picture of Jesus being nailed to the cross here in the sanctuary. And that doesn't even half of what was done to him. It doesn't portray the half of what Jesus did for you and I. We have the same friend and helper in the Holy Spirit. If we trust in him, our sorrow will be turned to joy. John 4, 16, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. And John 14, 26, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, listen to this, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance all things I said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because God's about ready to break your chain. And I want to... End with this. Hebrews chapter 13. 5 and 6. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Listen very carefully. As I end this morning. Be content with what you have. Begin to thank him for it. And as you thank him for it, and you can say, okay, Lord, I'm beginning to thank you for it. I thank you, Lord. I don't complain about what I don't have. I thank you for what I have. I thank you where you supplied my need. Because the promise of the Holy Spirit to you and I is that he will never leave us, nor he will he forsake us. And then you can say, I will no longer stand in an attitude of fear. I won't fear God. I won't fear man. I won't fear conditions of this world. But I will praise my God for allowing me to walk in the Holy Spirit and in power. Man can do nothing to me. Now let me go one step forward farther than this. The enemy can do nothing to you that the Lord will not allow. And if you begin to stay close to the Lord, and you begin to draw close to the Lord, the enemy will have no access to you. If you have been proclaiming, the Lord has been chasing me all the week, turn around because the enemy only chases those who fear a dog can smell fear that's the reason why they say when you get a dog running at you you turn around and you look at him sternly like you're not afraid and you watch him cower I say to you this morning, 
as you walk in the presence of God, you turn to the enemy and you look at him and don't be afraid and watch him cower. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He can do nothing, nothing, nothing that God won't allow. Amen? This woman... had no hope. God brought hope. There is power in the name Not only did he bring hope. There is power but he brought provision. Not only did he bring provision. But he brought his presence. Let God give you hope. Break every chain. Break let every God chain. give you provision. Break every and let chain. God give you His power this morning. Break every Amen. Break every chain. Break every Father, we thank you for your word. There is power. Oh, Come on. Lord, let your power reign in us. Come on. Holy Spirit, God, break every As we're here this morning and every head's bowed and every eye's closed, I'm going to ask this question because it's, it's this important. How many of you here in this building or on the internet would say, I'm going through some hard times. I'm going through some rough times. And I don't see the answer. And I would say and I would openly confess this morning that Jesus, you need to bring some answers. If you're here this morning, just lift your hand up to the Lord. Slip it down. Don't slip it to me. Don't slip it to anybody else. God knows. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord would say unto you this morning, trust in me. Allow me to do a work in you. Cast aside the weight that so easily besets you and go free. The Lord would say, I am about ready to shake your prison doors. Just as I shook the prison doors of Paul. When they sing praises to me, sing praises to me and I will shake your prison doors and you will be able to walk away free. And even further, some of you have felt dead. Just as I said to Lazarus, come forth, I say to you this morning, come forth and get out of the deadness and come alive. For my spirit has made you alive and it has brought you freedom. Now, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, begin to do that. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, break every chain. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, God's breaking chains right now in the spirit. I sense his spirit moving. You gotta hear it. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. You hear the chains fall? Father, right? Cause the chains to fall. Invite y'all to sing. Just just the hands of the Lord. Say, Lord, right now, let every chain fall. Lord, right now change in my life, if I have any, let them fall. And Lord, if, if there's no change in my life, Lord, I pray for those around me who might have chains, let them fall in Jesus' name. Set us free. Father, you have promised that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
Holy Spirit reign out in glory. Let your presence just be. In the Jesus' name, I pray. Break every chain. Amen. Break every chain. You believe it this morning? Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Ask him Come on. to move powerfully, wonderfully, and effectively because he's ready. There is power, there is power. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We pray. We know where it is. Lord, right now, we pray you. That as we go through this week, that you're going to break chains. That we're going to smash through the enemy's line. Take back territory that the enemy has taken. And that we're going to walk in freedom. In newness. In power and glory. And we're going to thank you for all of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Believe it? Amen. God bless you. Keep you this way.